Chapter 4. We welcome our viewing audience today, whether by local television, Facebook, live, or YouTube. Like and share this page. Let somebody know that Church on the Rock is live. Hebrews chapter 4. I want to look at verse number 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Turn around and look at your neighbors. Say a split personality. Turn around and look at somebody else you didn't come here with. Say a split 
personality. God bless you today. In the medical world, a split personality is called a dissociative identity disorder or DID. People with DID have two or more distinct personalities. The thoughts, actions, and behaviors of each personality may be completely different. We call it a split personality. But it's actually not a personality disorder at all. It's the presence of two identities that continually have power over a person's behavior. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist and I haven't studied medicine, so I have no desire to diagnose anyone who struggles with this very real and perplexing disorder. But I know that we are all born with a split personality of sorts. This type of disorder can't be found in a medical journal. Even though it has already been diagnosed and prescribed a cure. Think about it. We are all born with a sin nature. That's one identity we cannot escape. But we also have the capacity to do good. We all have the same opportunity to become what God desires for us. Still, it's a struggle. Listen to what Apostle Paul said about this struggle within his own body. He said, when I want to do good, I don't. And when I try not to do wrong, I do it anyway. One thing is certain, good people do bad things. James said the only way to avoid this is to submit yourselves, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Oh, Paul said something similar. He said he had to bring his body into subjection to the will of God. Now, listen to him. Uh, I run uh, straight uh, to the goal uh, with purpose uh, in every uh, step. Uh, I fight uh, to win. Uh, I'm not just shadow boxing uh, or playing around. Uh, I keep uh, my body, uh, yeah, I keep under my body uh, and bring it into uh, subjection. Uh, Oh, it's clear from the testimony of James and Paul that we are all fighting a war. A war between our carnal and spiritual nature. But listen, outcome is determined by input. Yeah, let me say that again. Outcome 
outcome is determined by input. Garbage in, garbage out. If you want your car to move, you fill it with gas. You wouldn't fill your tank with water and expect to get anywhere. Likewise, if you want your life to head in the right direction. You need to fill it and feed it from the right source. The source for good, not the source for evil. Our source for good is the word of God. Yeah, let me say that again. Our source for good is the word of God. Let's look through the words of Paul in Hebrews 4 and 12 and how the word impacts us. Do y'all have time for this today? Well, first, Paul says the word is quick. Turn around, look at somebody, say the word is quick. God, come on and put your blessed hands together. Go with me while we preach this today. Now, the word quick here does, does not mean fast. It means living. Acts 10 and 42 says that Christ is the judge between the quick and the dead. In other words, the living and the dead. Paul is saying that the word is alive. It is as alive as God himself who uttered it. It is a living, breathing bestseller filled with the character and the will of God. You can't read it without it having an impact on your life because it is alive with the sound doctrine of salvation. Oh, you heard it said just this week that our Constitution is a living, breathing document. By living and breathing, they mean the Constitution was written as a dynamic or flexible document. So it can change with the time. If there are mistakes in it, uh, they can be corrected uh, simply by redefining uh, the role uh, of government. Uh, but God's uh, living, uh, breathing uh, word uh, is uh, different. Uh, it has no need uh, to be uh, flexible uh, because God uh, never has and never will make any mistakes. His word is perfect in the beginning and it's still perfect because he is perfect. Jesus warns us not to change a single word or definition of his father's living, breathing masterpiece. Jesus says, verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one shot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till it be fulfilled. The chop and the tittle were small marks added to the Hebrew letters to change their emphasis and meaning. They were similar in appearance to our comma and exclamation point, but with far greater impact. It sounds like Jesus is saying, don't you dare mess with my father's law. If you know what's good for you. Or maybe he's saying if it ain't broke don't fix it. God 
God's word is not just paper and ink. It is a living reality. His word remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his living word continues and will continue to breathe on us for all eternity. Then Paul says the word is powerful. Let me hear you say the word is powerful. This means that the word is operative and effective in its purpose. It's not dormant and inactive. No matter how long you leave it on your coffee table and let it collect dust. The word is God's energizing promise that through though a man is dead, Yet uh, shall uh, he uh, live. When you read a novel by any other author, uh, it's nothing more than uh, entertainment. Uh, you don't run out uh, and act like the characters uh, in uh, the book. Uh, but when you read God's novel it touches your heart and compels you to be better and to do better God's word becomes a part of you even if you reject what you read it will still impact you because his word is a living power over you. If God can be a song in your heart, he will be a thorn in your side. God's word is so powerful that it can nourish the spirit of every believer with exactly what he needs to become and to remain a child of God by its sheer power. The word turns believers into overcomers. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. And that's all because of the power in the Word. Well, I know it's warm here in Northern California, and I'm going to let you go in a minute. But finally, uh, Paul says uh, the word uh, is sharper uh, than a two-edged sword. Uh, turn around and wave at somebody if you can. Uh, be nice uh, and say the word is sharper than a two-edged sword. Uh, let's give the Lord uh, a hand of praise uh, in this tabernacle. This means that uh, it cuts, uh, it can penetrate uh, and cut out uh, what needs to be uh, eradicated uh, with uh, the precision uh, of a masterful uh, surgeon. Uh, it is so precise uh, that it can separate uh, the soul uh, and the spirit uh, from uh, your very bones. And it can do it uh, without causing uh, a wound uh, because Christ uh, was already wounded uh, for uh, you. Uh, his scalp uh, was wounded uh, with 32 uh, thorns. Uh, his back uh, was scourged uh, with a bony whip. 
Uh, his hands uh, and feet uh, were wounded uh, with uh, nails. Uh, his side uh, was wounded uh, by uh, a Roman uh, spear. Uh, Paul says uh, God's word uh, can penetrate uh, the marrow, uh, the deepest part uh, of your bone structure, uh, and detect uh, every sin uh, that eats uh, at uh, your spirit. Uh, its cleansing power uh, is unlike uh, any other. Uh, with the utmost uh, precision, uh, the word uh, can cleanse us uh, from all filthiness uh, of the flesh uh, and spirit. Uh, nothing uh, hides uh, from the word's uh, scalpel. Uh, a greedy spirit, uh, a proud uh, look, uh, a vulgar tongue, uh, a sinful desire, uh, a foolish decision, uh, a jealous uh, stare, uh, an offensive uh, remark, uh, a dirty uh, joke, uh, a wicked uh, imagination, uh, an impure thought, uh, a filthy habit, uh, a quick temper, a rebellious attitude, a, a heart and a heart. Maybe you're one of those people uh, who thinks uh, you've gone too far, uh, gone uh, to be uh, any good. Uh, you're wrong, uh, even though uh, God's uh, established law uh, says uh, you uh, are guilty. Uh, here's uh, the good news. Uh, Christ uh, hath redeemed us uh, from the curse uh, of the law, uh, being made uh, a curse uh, for us. None of us uh, are worse uh, than uh, any other. Uh, for all have sinned uh, and fallen short uh, of the glory uh, of God. Uh, if you think uh, you're ugly uh, from the inside out, uh, I've got good news for you. Uh, Jesus uh, can make uh, you beautiful. Uh, sin uh, may have made you greedy. But Christ can make you generous. Sin may have made you hateful. But Christ can make you loving. Sin may have made you corrupt. But Christ can make you pure. Sin may have made you selfish. But Christ can make you sacrificial. Sin may have made you fearful, but Christ can give you a peace. You can't avoid the word. It's quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of God wants to take your split personality and Give it uh, a single-minded uh, purpose uh, to accept Christ uh, and uh, reject uh, sin. Uh, there is uh, no other method uh, to get the job uh, done. Uh, no other formula will work. Uh, no other remedy uh, will do. Uh, only Christ uh, can put uh, that song uh, in your heart uh, that you uh, so desperately uh, desire. Uh, a song uh, that will let the world uh, see uh, you uh, not uh, as a split uh, personality uh, but uh, as one uh, who responds uh, to the word of God trust in the promises of God yields to the spirit of God is faithful to the house of God and has a relationship with the son of God and fellowship with the saints of God he made my heart right, he made my soul right, and he made my mind right with him. Not alone. 
uh, personality. Yeah. I no longer uh, am running around uh, wondering uh, who I am uh, and where I belong. I've got Jesus. I've got Jesus. And oh, how I love him. suffering from a split personality today. Jesus wants to forgive you and Jesus wants to love you. You can be loved today and you can be heaven bound today if you want to be. Salvation is free but it is not cheap. It costs God his very best. Him wrapping him his own self in flesh, stepping through 42 generations to be born of a virgin, a pure woman, living this life sinless and blameless, dying on a cross, paying for sins he never committed so that you can have this life in Christ. It starts with a prayer of confession I am a sinner in need of a savior. It starts with a prayer of invitation. I want you to live in me and allow me to live in you. It starts with a prayer of repentance. I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me. 
I want to go to heaven when I die. It's not so much the words you say as the intent, the meaning from your heart. Won't you accept Jesus as your savior today? It really is simple. And when you accepted him, get in a church, get baptized, get in Bible study, and get with some real Christians who can help you be the best you that you can be. We'd like to hear from you today. Give us a call at area code 408-532-ROCK. If you decided to make that decision or you need a little help, give us a call. Someone will be there to help you on your journey. Or you can write me personally, send me a note at churchontherockbaptist.com. Visit our website, hit the message button. I'll get back to you. And together, we'll help you grow, glow, and go for Jesus. But you have to really want it. Well, it's offering time here at Church on the Rock. And again, we've made it very easy and simple for you to be able to share your gifts electronically to the various financial apps on your iOS and Google Play platform. All you have to do through the various apps of Zell Pay, which is our preferred, also PayPal and Cash App. When they ask for you to input information, all you have to do is enter our telephone number, 408-532-7625. That's 408-532-ROCK. It will go directly to the bank. Also, we are on the GiveLify app. You can search for Church on the Rock Baptist, San Jose. You'll see a picture of our sanctuary in the foreground. Follow the instructions you may give that way. Or visit our website, churchontherockbaptist.com. Hit the giving button and follow the instructions there. And finally, you may write us here at Church on the Rock. Mail your gift to Church on the Rock, Post Office Box 730-341, San Jose, California, 95 one seven three. Whatever you do for God through Church on the Rock, remember that we believe God will never let you outgive Him. So when you sow into the ministry, when you pay your tithes, when you give your offerings, we believe that God will bless you in ways that you could not even imagine. That's because it's in the book and it's the only sanctioned way to finance the kingdom of God here on earth. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. Well, until next time, same place, same time, join us for a breakthrough with Church on the Rock. We pray God's choicest blessings on you as you continue to fight this journey. Don't you give up, don't you give in but stay on the battlefield for the Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Battle the for my Lord.